morning all phil brown here with next gen cam today i'm going to go over how to build out a dovetail stock to be able to utilize in your fourth and fifth axis machining process so as you can see above me right here we kind of have a small example i'm going to go ahead and jump right into fusion 360 and start to model this out so i've already saved my part file in this case is dovetail stock so we could go ahead and get into our sketching so first i'm going to click create a sketch and we're going to pick a plane from there i have a tendency to like to use a rectangle for a lot of my shapes if you guys have already seen my other videos so let's go ahead and do a rectangle from center let's go ahead and find our midpoint down below and drop a second rectangle so that we basically have created the rough shape of our rectangle so we're going to go ahead and dimension this maybe we want to start with a two inch tall piece and then we want our stock to be three inches wide and then our dovetail in itself is going to be based off bottom to the edge i'm going to go ahead and make this point one in your guys's case depending on how deep your dovetails are on your actual vise this dimension is very critical because you want this to actually sit flat on the top of your dovetail you don't want it to all be based off this flat here so again we're going to go ahead and add our third dimension which is our dovetail width so we're just going to say that's one inch for right now and utilizing all of that we can now extrude out what we have so i'm going to go ahead and hit e for extrude on my keyboard you could also use the extrude command from up at the top in the toolbar and let's just say this is four inches long so as you notice it's just a square step it's not quite a dovetail yet we can adjust that by utilizing the draft tool so i'm going to go ahead and click my bottom face as well as my two side pieces and then I can create that 45 degree draft just by rotating the little wheel as we have here or typing it in dimensionally in the window. So now that I have that set, I'm going to go ahead and in this case it reset here. Let me go ahead and type it back in. We actually want that as a negative. So I'm going to go ahead and add my negative and hit enter. We have now created our dovetail feature as well as our stock. That now being said, I can go in and I can create one more thing. So in the case of how I usually use my dovetails, I like to keep a center line here. And then I like to set this up with an alignment pin. So you may not need the center line. It's just a little easier, in my opinion, just to put it in there and have it than not need it. But we're going to go ahead and add a slot at the midpoint. And that slot is so that we can utilize an alignment pin on our dovetail actual jaws. So as you can see here, I forgot to turn off construction line. I'm just highlighting, holding control and hitting X, or you could toggle construction line from the side. So now that we have that, I'm gonna go ahead and extrude down to that flat so that I can cut away that actual shape. One thing I did notice though, is that actual sketch is not fully constrained. So let's go see why it's not fully constrained. And the reason I can already tell you is because we never gave it an outside dimension. So in this case, let's go ahead and plug in whatever size alignment slot we want. I'm going to say mine is 250 divided by 2 because we're going to use a quarter inch dowel pin in my jaw. So again, there's our slot. We now have our slot set. We have our dovetail and our stock dimensions. We can now go into our parameter table and we can actually utilize parameters to control this. Or we could do this very manually. So let's say my stock is now one inch tall, two inches wide, and then I actually want my dovetail slot to be three quarters. I'm going to go ahead and say 0.75. And just like that, we shrank that down to get it to work. So if you want to get a little fancy with this, is you can create user parameters for your guys to make life easy. So we're going to say stock height. Now let's go put that back to two inches. And you can add as many as you want. I'm not going to add a ton here, but if I come down here and start to type stock, you're going to see stock height comes into play. And as soon as I add that, you'll see that part expand out. So now that we have that all set at the end with our part, we're going to go ahead and we're going to utilize our actual manufacturing workspace to create our tool path. So let's go ahead and switch to manufacturer create our setup if you're like me you never draw on the proper z plane so we can very quickly fix this by selecting our z axis is up i'm going to go ahead and put my x axis down my part so i'm going to use an edge could also use a face there i'm going to set my stock to be zero across the board because i want my stock the exact same size as my part that we're manufacturing and as you're going to see down here is we're actually 2.1 we're not that two inches we set we're going to go back and fix this here but 
XYZ is set. If you want to set that in a different corner, you're happy to. I'm just going to pick up center with the probe. But from here, we can go in now and we can create our tool paths to cut our actual groove. Or not our groove, but our dovetail. So I'm going to just use a 2D adaptive clearing. I'm going to go out and select my tool. In this case, we're going to use a half inch flat. So let's go ahead and get a flat end mill. I want that half inch flat that we have. My material in this case is aluminum. So let's grab an aluminum roughing tool path. And then let's select our edges. So I can actually pick that entire top island there. And it will find the difference between my material and my stock, which is very nice. Now I need to set my depth because I don't want to use the top edge. I want to go to the flat. So let's go to that selected flat and hit OK. So what you're going to see here is we're now going to have our roughing cycle all the way around the outside of our part to rough it out. We can then right click and derive into our actual 2D contour for finishing. And again, because we've already set the boundary of our part as well as our height, it's going to go down and around automatically and clean out everything going on. In this case, we do have a step here because we never cleaned out the flats at all. So if I wanted to, I could actually make two passes or again, going for the fact that this is kind of a first op kind of scenario, we could actually turn off stock to leave in the axial and then we'll have a nice clean flat that we're working with from there. So now we can go back. We're going to do our dovetail cuts. So I'm going to say 2D contour again, this time holding the alt key. I can actually click that first edge, and as you can see, it gives me a small single segment versus the actual chain all the way around. By clicking it a second time, I can add to that chain and extend that out. So we're going to do that to both sides. I'm going to then go find a dovetail cutter in the default library. So we're going to go ahead and go down to our dovetail cutters. Nice half inch 45 that we have here. And with that being said, we have our height set, we have our length set and everything, so we can go ahead and hit OK. And now you can see how we're going to come in and cut our dovetails both ways. Last and final thing I'm going to do is we're going to rough out that actual alignment slot. So let's go ahead and go to a 2D pocket. Reason why I'm choosing a 2D pocket is because I'm going to be taking a full width of a cut with something like a 3 16th end mill because that is a quarter inch slot. So in your guys' case, if you wanted to, you could go in there by all means and take it in one pass. I always like to just be a hair smaller than what's needed. So in this case, I went ahead and held the control key, picked my few boundary edges around and I can hit the plus sign. You can also turn on rest machining based on that half inch cutter. And then don't forget that we need to go all the way down to that flat again. So we're gonna go ahead and select our bottom boundary and hit okay. And in this case, we're starting way out away from our part and going all the way in. So we could go ahead and adjust that here and fix that. So let's go back. We're actually going to undo that chain. Let's grab the whole upper chain this time and hit OK. And as you can see, it's now shrank it down to that little area. Again, we have that step because we never turned off stock to leave. So let's go in there and turn off our stock to leave in the vertical or the axial. And now we're down to a true flat. And again, you could derive into your 2D contour and hit OK. And just like that, we're now going in after roughing and cleaning out that slot. So the neat thing about this is, is we've went ahead and we've actually machined this entire side and our dovetail. And because our tool paths are tied to our stock model, when it comes time to use this later on, as you're going to see in other videos, is we have that ability to automatically adjust this based on parameters. And from those parameters, we can actually automatically update our tooling. So as I go back to design and I go in and I say, you know what, this part is actually four inches wide. I want this actual dovetail to be three inches wide and my length overall, I could adjust down here with the extrude. So let's say this is now six inches long. If I go ahead and hit OK and go back to manufacture, you're going to notice all my original tool paths look funky. However, if you right click and go down to generate or push control G on your keyboard, you're going to notice that all my tool paths have self recognized all those areas for manufacturing. So if you guys like content like this, by all means, like and subscribe. We're going to be releasing more and more content in the coming weeks. We also have two YouTube live sessions that we're doing here in about two weeks based on the fact that we have SHOT Show coming up. We're also giving away a ton of stuff based on people liking and subscribing to enter your chance. In